we need to come to grips with the fact that here in the city of Chicago has a, a very dark stain, and that stain is the denial for too long about torture having occurred among Afro-Americans. So the memorial will finally be a way of saying, we acknowledge it now, even though it was nasty and unlawful, we still acknowledge it. The city of Chicago has failed to fully reckon with this racist police torture scandal and how we felt it was so important in part of the struggle to document this history and also to further educate as to the atrocities that occurred here and the struggle for justice. And so we thought about how do you memorialize these heinous events. And that is how we came up with this idea of the Chicago Police Torture Memorial Project. It's such a momentous occasion today. We are so happy. We got over 70 submissions from people and they are displayed around here at this beautiful exhibit. This wall um, holds the names of all the, uh, all the torture victims and those that have survived will write their name onto the wall. The memorial as a torture survivor means a great deal to me. It means that our voices are being heard and it means that America hasn't forgot about us. You know, and I feel like coming here or go to an event is like a breath of fresh air. You know, to have uh, a memorial under any level that acknowledges torture is remarkable. It is a start to hopefully having people that are in the appropriate uh, power to maybe take a look at this and to now correct it once and for all. When the organizers first uh, put out a call, it was, it was clear in the, in the call that everybody who submitted a proposal would be represented in one form uh, in the exhibition. Some of those proposals were uh, architectural proposals, and this is our public art proposal wall, where we, where we host um, digital illustrations of what some architects, artists, uh, students, um, anonymous people have, uh, have proposed for projects. A lot of the torture devices were things that I had around my apartment. They were everyday um, objects. So I did my photos of objects that are around my apartment. Um, and it was not just because I was drawn to that, but it was because two things. Who would think to use everyday objects to torture someone? And also, as a survivor, how do you handle having triggers around you all the time just in your everyday life? In this project, she took slides of images of places where torture had occurred, and they are they're being preserved in olive oil. So the, the interpretive moment is, is really taking on a, a different turn here, where it doesn't necessarily have to reflect um, one particular instance, but it allows you to have your own understanding of what, what you see in torture. We will have roving exhibitions. So it's gonna go throughout the city of Chicago. Uh, we wanna have people continue to contribute their proposals. Um, we wanna continue to educate people. Um, and we wanna work to not only get the reparations for the torture survivors in city council by getting an ordinance passed, we want to get hearings for the guys behind bars, and we also want to start trying to make permanent various memorials so that the, this history does not get washed away. This program is partially supported by a grant from the Illinois Arts Council, a state agency.